Welcome to The Property Show and thank you for tuning in. They say, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Here at The Property Show, we make sure you're enlightened on all things property. On The Property Pick of the Week, we take a look at Milimani, an ideal investment for a first-time home buyer, as well as investors looking for good returns. We'll also explore the emerging trend in container homes, their viability, cost implications, and just how it could be your next best investment. On the accessory spot, we look at an industrial rustic decor. And on our home segment, we catch up with Maureen on her renter's journey. I think it's very important when you have somewhere secured where you, you can lay your head and you're not worried about, you know, so many things that come in life that are unpredictable. Later on, various investors and developers will share their thoughts on investing in property during an election season. It is said, fortune favors the brave. It's the best thing to invest. You won't get lower prices than now, ever again. When the markets are down, you don't run away. It's your country, uh, you take your position, and you optimize on your returns. Finally, a highlight of a selection of properties available in the market. Sit back and let's get enlightened. As always, there is something for everyone. We kick off with a highlight of a project located just a few kilometers from Kitangela town with beautifully landscaped spacious gardens, Milimani homes. Let's have a look. Milimani Homes. Milimani Homes are three bedroom ensuite bungalows situated in Kitengela, about 1.5 kilometers off Old Namanga Road and five minutes drive to Kitengela town. It is a gated community secured with a brick wall. Each house sits on a 50 by 100 plot with separate titles. Accommodation includes spacious lounge that opens to a veranda, separate dining area, spacious open plan kitchen, three bedrooms all en suite and plinth area of 155 square meters. Salient features include 24-hour security, parking area, individual garden and adequate water supply. The price for this bungalow is from 6.75 million Kenya shillings. The rental income is from 35,000 Kenya shillings per month. We discover a new trend in housing, taking root in Kenya, container homes. What is it all about? Just how convenient would it be to have a portable dream home? Imagine being able to get the same in as few as 14 days. Yes, it is possible with container homes. 
We are in an era of brick and mortar, but this does not limit one from getting a new taste of their dream house. Building a brick and mortar bungalow takes three to four months to complete, but that's not the case for container homes. They only take 14 to 30 days to complete. Since the housing shortage has been estimated to rise to 240,000 units annually, there has been need for innovators to explore other options of housing, popularly referred to as container homes. This housing trend has taken root in the Kenyan market. Among the things that have made this housing option stand out are strength and durability, saves on labor, availability, they are eco-friendly, and they can be built extremely fast. At Containers Kenya, we deal basically in dry containers and refrigerated containers. These are samples of our dry containers, ideally because we only buy and sell used containers. These are containers that shipping companies have been using them, either to transport goods abroad and to here, and now their timelines have, have has passed. So we buy these containers and reuse them. As you can see, they have minimal rust and dents. So ideally, when a client comes to choose a container, either for fabrication or to buy it as is, they will come and among our fleet, we have so many containers in the yard and our different yards. You will choose one that has as little rust as possible or with minimum, with minimum dents. But as you will see, once we choose a container, the paintwork that is done on the outside tries to, as much as possible to remove all the, the rust and to do some good paint job. This is a sample of a 20-foot container, and this is a sample of a 40-foot container. Now, all our containers come with the uh, ownership documents. Actually, generally, if you are to buy any container from any uh, container dealing company, make sure that they have documents. There's a document called the Container Interchange Outward Document. It actually acts like the container logbook. This is only issued at the port once the container is being dispatched from the port. And they have unique serial numbers. If you can look at this 20-foot container, the CAXU 6452974, that's a unique serial number that will be only indicated in the, in the Container Interchange Outward Documents, which we regularly call just the container logbook. Now these ones are not transferable. So as such, we usually do a sales agreement that is between us and the client, indicating that we have transferred ownership from Containers Kenya, that is us, to you as the client. In future, if you want to sell this container, you will use that interchange document and then create your own sales agreement rather, that will indicate transfer of ownership from you now to the new owner. We're now inside a one-bedroom container house. Where we are standing is where we are supposed to have the living room. As you can see, we made sure that the doors are big enough to allow a lot of air inside. And because the whole door is glass, that's why we, we, we did a grill inside, just for security purposes. There's some fine, final paint works to be done. We tried to make the, the living area look as much fancy as possible. Of course, also consulting with the client. That's where you, you see what we call descended ceilings. And wherever you are seeing boxes, that's the, we will have lights of different colors. Behind me is the kitchen counter. So ideally, the client will have a stool here, kind of like, kind of like the, the dining bar stools. So this is the table where they'll be using. There is small space in this, so we, we, we try to be as innovative as possible. Uh, you can see the tiles that we've used on the wall against this uh, uh, counter here. It's, it's, it's a very nice one. So this will be the small fridge space. This is the sink section, of course, with its cabinetry. And under the kitchen counter, we also have more cabinetry. And on top here, as you can see, there is a window here so that whenever you're washing your dishes, uh, you can be able to see what's happening outside. We will proceed now to the washroom. What we do with the washrooms inside the container homes, houses, we make sure that the walls are all tiled. What you can see, these are actually tiles because there is, there is a lot of water here. Then the gypsum that we use in the washroom is actually called water-resistant gypsum and we use water-resistant filler because of the steams that will come from the shower. So then we have the, 
the bedroom this is the bedroom if you notice we use very high quality doors if you look this is not a normal flash door it's uh, actually a very high quality door with uh, very nice locks you also realize because of uh, space implications instead of using normal windows we use slight aluminium sliding windows for this particular bedroom it also goes with the client test they are slightly more expensive than the normal windows that we see uh, but ultimately they brought out the feel and the taste that the client wanted considering that the, 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 the window profiles are white we also have another extractor fan also inside the, the bedroom just to make sure that you know air flows in and nicely well here then we have the closet section uh, all these, all the carpentry works are done here. We, we don't buy anything ready. We, we have carpenters in the house. We have floor guys. We have interior guys. And uh, the spaces done, were done here according to the client's requirements. Uh, so the whole container as it looks right now, they, what we are remaining with are final uh, paint touches and filler works. So that the container can be ready for dispatch in the next two or three days. So ideally, this is all done within three weeks, four weeks on the maximum. Uh, sometimes we have power outages in industry area, that's why we always give an extra week. If you are joining two or more containers to do a two bedroom, a three bedroom, a four bedroom house, we usually give 40 days. 40 days on the minimum on paper, but we will extend it to 50 days on the very maximum in case there are power outages also at the client side. We will do the basic welding works here and then transport the containers and join them there. Basically why people prefer going for containers is the speed of uh, delivery of the jobs. You know it is different from the brick and mortar which takes quite a while. A container takes a period of at most a month. It depends on the, if uh, there are any other complications, it takes a month and a half. But uh, a basic house with a basic floor plan takes about a month. The life expectancy of a container home is uh, basically forever because uh, the steel done from a container is called cotton steel. It is for the con uh, shipping sea conditions. So once you put it on land, a land definitely our tropical climate is uh, basically even not adverse as the sea, so it uh, it will take quite, it will take a lifetime, not quite a time, a lifetime. But the advantage of a container, you can as well move with it. You see, you can move with it and even sell the piece of land you are you are on. You don't necessarily have to to you know once you do a construction with houses you, to bring it down, you have to bring the whole house down. But for a container, you can just carry your containers and move to another vicinity. The same floor plan of a brick and mortar house is the same floor plan that is used on a container. The only difference is that this is a container and most of, most, most of the time it is a perfect square. So we have to design how the outlets and the inlets of the water are. But uh, basically they are just the same. The drainage inside, the inlet and the outlets are all the same. You know, uh, at currently we have a shortage of houses uh, in the country. And people still are on the mentality of brick and mortar, which is costly. You find somebody has done one floor is uh, stuck there because of finances. But this one, if you compare that, uh, doing a brick and mortar house and a container house, it is cheaper. But still, on the mentality side of the citizens of the country, they need to change to have a paradigm shift and do container houses because it is quite cheaper, faster to do, and. Uh, it is permanent and semi-permanent at the same time. Yeah. It has all the features that the one that you think brick, of, uh, brick and mortar has, container has also those, the same, same features. We have not encountered any problems with the government because uh, actually we are supplementing them with uh, houses, housing units, because uh, there's a crisis of a shortage of houses. So if the more we do containers and the more we advertise for the containers, the better. People will have a paradigm shift and uh, we do more even container houses instead of doing big buildings which are quite costly. And this is a cheaper way of uh, having a modern, formal and uh, organized planning for houses. This is a basic model of a house, a two bedroom house. 
and uh, it is two 40 foot containers joined together to give it a more spacious room. This is the living room with uh, quite fancy lights and this is the dining area and as we move, this is the entrance, you move into the kitchen. The kitchen is just like any other kitchen with the wardrobes, power lightings, the sink and uh, all the accessories and an exit door also, emergency which also acts as an emergency door. And as we go behind, here we meet the toilet. We have our horse hand basin here. So this is a toilet. And the, the toilet is just next to the two bathrooms. This is uh, one of the bedrooms of about 12 by 10 feet. And with the, with the wardrobes, the wardrobes to hang your clothes. Again, the fancy lighting. This is the other bedroom with the, the cupboards and the drawers. Again, the PowerPoint, two PowerPoints and the fancy lighting. So the container homes, as you can see, it is uh, basically just like the other housing. You see the tile, the floor tiles, the, the mahogany finished doors and the tile work. It is basically just like another house, a brick and mortar house, but at cheaper cost and a faster rate to deliver. Lastly, mortar pod containers. The Moja Pod is a mobile prefab structure made from a shipping container. It can be a starter home, home extension, guest house, studio, office, or a retail store. The Moja Pods can be combined to provide more living space. There are two models, the Moja Premium and the Moja Fundamentals being 40 feet and 20 feet container respectively. A 20 feet shipping container can be utilized as a retail space, a guest addition, an office or a modest home or cabin or studio bed sitter. The 40 feet shipping container can host a separate bedroom and a larger kitchen and bathroom. There are different options you can choose to allow the pod to respond to your needs. This varies from furniture, appliances, outdoor covered deck extensions to off-grid energy and waste management options. So the MojoPod, this prototype took us 15 days to build. Uh, we did this one, uh, we have our funis that we do for our, our uh, commercial fit-outs, as quick we described. So this one, so we have a good working relationship with our fundies, and so we've been able to turn this over in a quick time. When we move into production, we'll be uh, maintaining a speed of around that. So for this 20-foot model, we'll be, we'll be able to produce in about uh, three weeks, and the 40-foot model in about four weeks. So some of the advantages that I would single out with the Moja port, there are actually three advantages. One is the speed of build. As Jeremy said, we build uh, this 20-foot uh, container in uh, 15 days. Another is the mobility. You're able to transport this container uh, far up the truck can go, this container can go. And the third is the quality of build. Um, that anyone who's interested in a quite uh, a high and refined quality of build, uh, you're able to get that with speed and with mobility. I would say um, the space uh, is constrained to a 20-foot container. The width is uh, a very standard width, which is 2.4 meters. So everything has to happen within the 2.4 uh, meters of width. But with design, design always has constraints. And for us, that's just a challenge. And this can be mitigated in very many ways, in terms of the way you place the windows, the openings, in the way the materials that you use to create the illusion of more space than you have. And also, uh, being a furniture manufacturer, 
We've also designed the furniture fit to fit the space specifically. So for example, the sofas that we're sitting on, it fits the space without looking too big or bulky. It makes sense in the space. We've had a lot of interest from commercial uh, entities, um, from the hospitality industry, hotels, uh, from the banking industry, banks, uh, retail stores as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of them are looking for uh, a model where they can roll out uh, a chain, the retail chain across the country in a way that's fast, the same quality build, um, and, they, and it rolls out in a good speed. Okay. Uh, we've also had a number of interest from um, companies doing uh, large infrastructure projects, construction projects, and NGOs who are looking for things like staff quarters in remote areas. So that's for quite a bit of interest from those sort of entities. We've also had uh, interest from your everyday um, uh, clients who have uh, maybe an acre or half an acre, and they want to be able to um, have a guest extension or a library or a gym and they do not want the hassle to begin building. So it's more of like an instant gratification sort of need. Uh, yeah, so speed and, and, and quality of building. Our mantra here at the property show is to make sure there is something for everyone. Elections come and go, yet so many times developers as well as investors take a position of wait and see approach. Many have asked, is investing during an election season prudent? Let's get insights from seasoned developers. period can be daunting for real estate stakeholders as we see developers and investors adapt a wait and see approach. So what does the future hold for real estate? Let's get insights from a seasoned developer. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you Nancy. And what does the future hold for the real estate sector? Fusion Capital has been in this market for the last 10 years so that means we've gone through uh, two elections already uh, and we never see elections as a reason to stop looking at, it, at new investment or stop investing. Um, we know that uh, the region uh, has been and will continue uh, to be stable. We've had incidences in the past, uh, but nothing uh, to stop an international investor from looking at investments in this region. So it's our intention uh, to continue uh, being in this market, uh, to continue investing, to continue looking at new opportunities uh, before, during and even after elections. As a developer, how are your projects doing? Well, as you know, we, we recently launched Muranga, which is the sale of uh, uh, subdivided plots. And we've been very impressed uh, to see a significant uptick of a very short period of time. And I think that then tells you that uh, people are not taking the, or investors are not taking the, no, are not necessarily taking a wait and see approach. Uh, in counties like Nakuru again, uh, as you know, Nakuru uh, is viewed as a, a haven of peace. And the uptake again has been quite good. We've just uh, finalized the sale of uh, phase one, we have embarked on phase two, and there is significant interest in uptake even on, on phase two of what we call Monty Apartments in, in Akuru. And so as you look at regions or counties, uh, people are making decisions because the argument is this is our home, we are here to stay, we're not necessarily going to move out after elections, and we can get into reasonable deals. Uh, during and after elections and so people have continued to make decisions. The same applies uh, with Meru. Uh, we've continued to see retailers making decisions to take up space. Uh, apartment buyers again, uh, they are making decisions to, uh, to, to buy uh, the apartments. 
And so really nothing, nothing, nothing stops. So you look at it regionally again, or uh, you look at it from a county perspective, people will continue to make decisions on, on real estate. And I think the argument is when the markets are down, you don't run away. It's your country, uh, you take your position, and you optimize on your returns. Thank you so much, engineer, for your time. Today, we know that elections come and go, yet a lot of investors in this sector shy away from investing. So my question is, what is your take of investing during this season in this sector? Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, I have been around uh, the real estate investment sector, uh, practicing either as a project manager or as uh, a developer or a combination of both since 2001 which means that I have been through the 2002 elections, 2007, 2013, and this will be my fourth one. And the truth is that uh, there's a lot of talk of people being scared away from investing in real estate. Uh, in my take is that needlessly so, uh, because uh, investing in real estate is, is long-term in nature, first of all. Number two is that you've got different categories of investors. Uh, you've got people who make a living in only real estate. And so in good times and bad times, they've got to, to, to live through the seasons. On the other extreme, you've got FICO investors uh, or people who came to make a quick killing, uh, hit and run sort of uh, people, very FICO, and they're always looking for excuses as to why they should not be investing. And so this is only one of excuses. Next year, they'll be telling you a Another excuse, story. yes. Because there's always reasons why not to. But I think the more compelling thing that they should be doing is investing now because it's the best time to invest. Mm -hmm. It's the best time to be planning. It's, you, you won't get lower prices than now, ever again. You know, the, you the prices, what the you, prices you have now yes. are the lowest you'll ever exactly. get. So it's a very exactly. good time uh, to, to enter the market. So it depends on really at what stage of your life uh, you are in real estate investments and always like in any other uh, uh, investment you should always be strategic uh, about how and when you invest there is always a good deal all the time it depends on exactly what you're looking for I find during the elections you get more deals than other times our experience is that there's a lot of cash around elections for obvious reasons and uh, it's a pretty good place to park money. And we find in our experience that people do park, tend to park money in real estate. You've heard it from the experts. Indeed, fortune favors the brave. This conversation continues next week. Don't go away, we'll be right back with much more. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show, where all your investment needs are covered. What do you desire your dream home to feel and look like? Today, it's all about a touch of modern industrial decor. Let's have a look. Interiors. There's a fusion of both modern and uh, classic look. Uh, for example, this is another living room setup. The sofa is called uh, L-shaped sofa, left chest, and it's made of wrinkled linen. It has the rustic feel. It's removable, feathers, and foam. Another thing about the L-shape, it's very huge. As you can see, it is almost to four-seater. You can use it 
living room, you can use it as your TV room, depending with also the size that you have in your house. If you have uh, more space remaining, you can always go for two arm seats, like the two we have uh, at the corner. And also you can do side table, which is really matching with our shelves. Uh, the shelves are made of rustic, reclaimed wood. This can also brighten your own uh, this room because the room is uh, has dark color seats, and also the shelf you can do candle holders, the ones that I was showing you, and book, can use it as a bookshelf, and uh, some of the decals. What we have here is an industrial dining set. Um, as you can see, it has um, metal base or metal frame and the top part has that unfinished uh, look and feel. Uh, it's made of oak wood and again what we've done, we've combined both uh, rustic and industrial with modern. These seats are very modern because it's a PVC but a very quality PVC, very hard and uh, comfortable. And you can see the shape of the seat. Uh, it's made to take the shape of your back. It makes you comfortable when you sit on it. On top, we've done a very nice setup. This is a centerpiece made of uh, ceramic. It is rustic ceramic bowl and also uh, ceramic vases. Uh, carved uh, to have that rustic look also. You can also add um, shelving um, to add um, a different look in your dining area. You can do this or do a buffet, depending also with kind of your room and also your taste. As we've done the shelves, but we'll also advise someone to at least do the buffet also. And on the shelves, you can, um, for us, we're just doing using this as our display, but normally since it's dining area, you can still do nice decor. You can also do books. Here we have a bar stool. Normally you don't need to use it uh, for bar. Uh, when I say bar stool, you can have maybe an area like a kitchen, an open kitchen area where you have a counter. You can use this, you can sit on it and um, you don't have to also use it for seating purposes also. You can just use it as a de deco. You can put it in your house and it just changes the whole um, house setup just makes your house expensive and looks nice. What are you seeing on this wall? We're having a collage of different prints. These are prints done on canvas. And again, uh, they are exclusive. Actually, we've customized the sizes of these prints. And another thing about these prints is that they are African inspired and um, they always invite conversations in your house because everyone will always want to know um, where is this lady from, why are they doing the headbands and everything. It just brings that, uh, uh, you know, the conversation part in your own room. And again, another thing about this, we're also giving ideas on clients. If you have a huge wall and you don't have a big painting or a print to do on your wall, you can always do a collage of uh, prints the way we've done. It's actually very beautiful and um, we're doing neutral colors. This is very nice for us to actually work with different houses. It doesn't matter what color theme you have in your house. The best thing is that neutral colors will always go well with uh, different themes or different colors in your houses. That's why at least we are trying to put something that can be used widely. be signature accessories and furniture. What is that piece of furniture you'd like featured on this segment? Just drop us an email. Who knows? Maybe it's just what has been lacking to complete your dream home.
before you own a home or even rent one, there's always that mental picture in your head. You may never accomplish the exact picture, but it always drives what you settle for. Our guest today shares her rental experience. Interesting. Actually, I'm new in Nairobi. I just came in two months ago and um, my journey has been quite interesting in terms of, uh, I, I wasn't aware that people are really looking for a home. You know, it's something that you take for granted, especially if you're from the upcountry. One was that uh, it's near town, because I live in Pangani, which is near town. Uh, two, the environment itself, it's not, um, people are there, so the security, uh, yeah, and um, basically it's just near town. I think that being near town is what attracted me the most, yeah. When I looked at how much I'm paying rent, the rent in Nairobi is high. When you put in, in the cost of also transport, uh, what you're spending becomes a lot. So when you're able to save on a home, because sometimes you're not very sure about your income rate, I think it's very important when you have somewhere secured where you, you can lay your head and you're not worried about, you know, so many things that come in life that are unpredictable. Uh, the exact challenges is, um, like in Nairobi, when you want to find a house, you're asked for two months deposit and you find that uh, Sometimes you don't have that extra one month deposit they ask you. You just have, for example, if you're, you're looking for a home and it's worth 10,000, and they're asking you to pay a double 10,000, and getting that money is, is, is a hassle on itself. And sometimes even getting to connect electricity, water bill, you know, that whole journey, it's very expensive. I definitely plan to own a home in the near future on the pipeline. I believe that uh, when it comes to decorating, especially decorating a home, you should, when you open the door, you should feel like calm and at peace. Even though you've had that bad day, you're stuck in traffic because you've decorated it and it's, you know, it makes your soul happy. You know, it, there's nothing like rule that you have to do this, you have to do this. I believe you just go with your instincts, go with what makes you happy. My dream house would be in a beach where I could just see the beach, you know, and the sun, uh, sunset and sunrise, and it would be vintage with glass, with glass, um, with glass windows so that I could see, you know, the outside without having curtains. Yeah, I hope it will come true. <laughs> dream home is a bed sitter, a bungalow, a maisonette or a container home. It's a story we would like to share. Just call on us and I'll be at your doorstep. Next, the property gallery with two ideal properties for investment. Gitanga duplexes are a modern development located in the heart of Lavington, off Gitanga Road. Privileged by its exquisite design and opulent finishes, this elegant residence offers 36 four-bedroom ensuite duplexes. Accommodation includes lower level, spacious living room, dining room, fitted kitchen with detached pantry, guest bedroom on select units, Doobie area with washing machine provisions and exterior storage for gas tanks. Upper level. Spacious master ensuite bedroom with walk in closet, two bedrooms ensuite, TV or family room which can be turned into a fifth bedroom. Salient features include two car parking spaces per unit, low maintenance fully glazed UPVC windows, balconies with panoramic views, carbon paved driveways. Guardhouse, 
underground and overhead water tanks. Price is on inquiry. Palace Apartments is a modern, elegant residential development in Raqqa, 100 meters off Limuru Road, next to the intersection with the Northern Bypass. The apartment blends luxury and utility to meet your modern housing needs. It's located a few minutes drive to the city center, village market, and to Rivers Mall. Accommodation includes living room, unique finishes, Fit a kitchen with granite tops and extractor hoods, two bedrooms, master ensuite, and inbuilt wardrobes. Salient features include 24 hour security and CCTV, gate to house intercom, DSTV and Zuku installed, solar water heaters, and borehole. The price guide for the two bedroom apartment goes for 7 million Kenya shillings. As an investment, the return income for the two-bedroom apartment is 40,000 Kenya shillings per month. In a nutshell, this is the right time for designing investors to invest mostly for long-term gains. Real estate remains the highest returning asset class with average returns of 25.8% compared to other asset classes with an average return of 12.3%. Next week, this conversation on investing during an election season continues. Thank you for watching. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!